It's Rimworld, where a local wild boar has gone mad and will attack everyone it sees. I hope you're having a wonderful day as we follow the travails of this one wild boar that slowly makes its way through yet another round of foggy rain towards us. I suppose we should probably set someone up to deal with it. Where are the hawks when you need them, eh? Troll pants, you might want to stay away. I want to stay away. Where's it going? Oh, it is going this way. Okay, there we go. Surely. Go in. Uh, go away. Incredible shooting accuracy going on. What an action-packed start. Oh, great. Hawk's been hit. Kiting a wild boar. Okay, Zari. Could you just come and put an end to this, please? Thanks. Oh, it's dead. You killed it. Okay, good job. Well, there we go. Dinner is now available. After all that excitement, I don't even know where to begin. Zari's got a brand new weapon. And I wanted to say Kerwin has one too, but it's actually poor quality. So I think we might want to make another one. Although I just noticed there's a red wooden mace here. We'll build another breach axe for Kerwin, I think. I didn't even think to check. But Hawks was stabbed twice by that wild boar. And Clav is joking about cooking with corn cobs with Farley. Well, you're in the right place for that because uh, we got corn. We got lots and lots of corn. We have so much corn. And more to come. So much more to come. This this ain't Cauliflower Valley. This is Corn Valley. Another quest has shown up, this time for the deserter. Cilia Akinatus, an intelligence agent calling from nearby, deserted the army of the Imperium and is being hunted by a loyalty squad and wants to join us. If we accept her, we'll become an enemy of the uh, Imperium, though. And one Janissary and five troopers seems like quite a little bit. But, I mean, oh, we can't even find out if this person's any good. And they're saying that they can tell us how to develop our psychic powers further, which is something that I think Hawks, Nacho, and Trollpants might be interested in. The thing is, Hawks has already been brought into the fold, shall we say, by the Empire. And being a lady from an urban world, such as she is, I'm not sure that Hawks would be too gung-ho about helping a deserter from the Imperium. I mean, like, Hawks isn't part of the Imperium and barely knows what it is, but she's she's at least familiar with that sort of culture. And, I mean, the Imperium did get here first, and they've been nothing but pleasant to us in that short amount of time. I think we, we've got seven days to decide. I think we'll leave that for now. Maybe come back to it. I don't know. More importantly, perhaps, Microelectronics is finished, which means that we've now unlocked a lot of new stuff... And we probably want to expand. Well, I say expand. We want to uh, we want to adjust where our stockpile is so we can, you know, get this lab looking a bit more like a lab. And it's also going to mean that we need to think some about our power with a little bit more detail than a solar panel and two windmills. And I mean, industrial generators wouldn't be a bad idea there. I think we'll reroll that. Utility columns, they need power too. I think we'll grab them all the same. But yeah, we are going to need... First of all, I suppose, what we're going to actually need is a nice little high-tech research bench. Let's pop that straight in there. Bad temperature. Yeah, we should probably build some heaters too, which again, just translates to... We need more power. But how do we get you power? We're in a forest, actually, and we've got a lot of wood already. That translates to me to, you know, the wood fire generator being a potential option. That's a free thousand, as long as we've got the fuel for it. We'll put together a little power shack. Look at this. Now we're now we're really researching. So much for just letting Research Reinvented take care of all of it. I mean, Research Reinvented is still happening, right? They're analyzing a brick at the moment. But we're researching the utility columns, sure. And our power shack is basically put together as well. We've actually got excess on the grid now too. So sure, I, th I think those two generators and the two batteries will keep us uh, keep us with the lights on for a little while. And also enable us to heat this base up a little bit too, which is kind of nice. We finished that weapon for Kerwin and we actually got a good breach axe out of it too. So Kerwin's finally got something beyond the tentacle and has actually almost fully recovered thanks to that death refusal. So that's 
kind of cool. It does, in fact, regrow everything. When Kerwin first joined us, they had basically nothing in terms of, you know, a functioning body. But now, now, all that's missing is that right eye, really, and a couple of surgical scars, I guess. Putting together that stockpile extension, I've put a tailoring bench down too, because I noticed that Farley's not currently wearing much in the way of clothing. They do have pants on, so that's what's important, I suppose. You're not just wandering around, letting it all hang loose. It'll allow us to build some coats as well. Build, sew, tail, whatever you want to call it. Coats are on now on the agenda. This is our first actual... We, I guess we would call it a raid threat, given it, it falls into the same category as that. And it's a man-hunting pack of three? Three boom rats, which is... Well, it isn't terrifying, is it? Let's be reasonable. However, the there is the sort of simple fact that we are predominantly melee-focused, so it is very much going to need to be Hucket and Hawks that uh, put up a bit of a defense here. But after all that waiting, after all that time... This is what Randy sends us. Fox is in there already. And one's down, so... And they're... Okay. We uh, get rid of that one too? Yeah, there we go. Now let's go put this fire out before the entire forest bun burns down. Crisis over. And we got a little bit of dinner out of it too, so sure. Well, great. Oh, some edge of your seat stuff there. A fully organized, except for the blue gel and the skull, but we don't talk about those. Stockpile. I've just realized as well, actually, we, with the uh, microelectronics, we also got our hands on the comms console and the orbital trade beacon. I think we should probably put those down somewhere too. I thought we'd remove all the roof before... <laughs> before collapsing the uh, old stockpile, but no. We managed to not have that happen, so Nacho has taken a bit of a bump to the head. He's actually going to bleed out from it in 21 hours. Fortunately, Farley's on the case. And we could, if we wanted to, use the comms console to summon a dangerous and hostile Diabolus, which would give us a signal chip. I think we will do that at some point, maybe just not yet. Soon. We'll say soon. Just whilst I was moving over the... Uh stone block cutting experience we're being attacked now by a mad hedgehog it's i i don't understand why randy does these things in fact we're not even being attacked by a mad hedgehog it's just here look at it it's furious have you ever seen a hedgehog like it it's rage can't be contained you know he's he, this hedgehog's had like three shandies it's feeling large and it's coming for us Oh, there's, there's some beavers here too. I think by the time this hedgehog actually arrives to cause any potential harm to anybody, and I mean, what's it going to do? Nibble you? It's probably going to settle back down. It's in the base. It's amongst us. I can't even bring myself to kill it. Let's just leave it. It's trying to get in. It, it's given up. It's, it's still maddened. It's still a manhunter, and it did... Okay, actually, it, it did some damage. It did 12% of the door's hit points in damage. Look out, troll pants. It's managed to chase Nacho out into the woods. <laughs> it's going for it. It's, it's really chased Nacho far. Look. I'm genuinely surprised it's still going. She's at the edge of the map. We've got an opportunity to unlock Xenogenetics, and given the fact that we've already been to an abandoned gene lab, I'd like to think that our ragtag crew would might might have it in mind to maybe figure out a way of storing those things that they ultimately just had to sell. So sure, I think uh, some Xenogenetics research makes sense in its own weird way. The reign of terror has come to an end, and the hedgehog has settled down. I think this is the same hedgehog. I feel like we should tame it. We're going to tame it. Another quest for the solitary phytokin. Cacropia Sokoa, a powerful phytokin, is calling from nearby, cast out by the toxic community for giving them the wrong advice. 
now she's being hunted by one heck of a search party. Two drifters. What's that? Ten people? Wants us to keep her safe, and she'll arrive immediately and soon be followed. A plant-based humanoid. A Garanlan kin. And an architect, you say. That means that you potentially can... What's the word I'm looking for? Build things. I wonder if she's any good in a fight. Until that point, I wonder if we've actually got a... We haven't really got a gun to give her. Yeah, we can't give her a gun because we can't make any guns. But, like, I do kind of want to accept this quest. I think we could potentially manage to fight one, that off. And, I mean, it's... We are, we've turned into a bit of a charitable place, you know, and this is marked as a charity, you know, just, just go. Sokoa has joined. Sokoa, Kalani, well, Kakropia, Kalani, Sokoa. Zooming on in here. What are you good at? Actually, she's another intellectual character. She's got some artistic skill too, which is nice, because that's not something what we had. She's incapable of violence. <laughs> Why? Why are, why are almost half of us incapable of violence? Oh, fine. Sure. Welcome, Kalat. God's sake. How are we meant to defend ourselves when everyone's unwilling to defend ourselves? And they have arrived. Ten of them. Ten of them whom are attacking immediately. Okay. Some tox grenades. Any particularly threatening guns is the real question. Not particularly. Maybe the combat handgun. But I think, actually... We should be able to manage this. It's going to depend largely on which direction they come at us from. If they come at us through this little pass here, then that would be ideal. So they are splitting up. Well, some of them are splitting up. That's fine. We'll send Nacho in to deal with any stragglers or would-be splitter-uppers. And the non-violent crew can just trap themselves in there for now. Which way are they even coming out at us? I can't figure this out. They are coming up. They're all coming this way. Some of them are coming this way. Okay, fine. Here's what we do. Zari and Kerwin. And I guess Hucker, seeing as you are in fact firing on them. Okay, one's down. Okay, great. The fighting has started. Nacho's already in the mix here. That's fantastic. Get out of this get out of firing range. Get out of firing range. Get out of firing range. Stop being shot at. Okay, Hawks. Cover behind the tree. Aethel cover behind tree. How are we getting on up here? Kerwin has succeeded in putting snuff in the ground. What happened? Well, you were mostly shot. Okay, sure. Kerwin, finish this one off. Melly, Melly attack him to death. Zari just finished it off? Yeah, sure. Okay, Zari finishes it off. Kerwin's still in the fight, so Kerwin comes round. Hawks, I need you to get in here. Nacho will need to do some work here too. And Hux, uh, oh goodness, behind the tree. Kerwin's coming. They're dead. Okay, Zari Brown here too then. Okay, Nacho. What's this person doing? They're shooting Aethel. I can't believe it. Stun them. Right. Do I want to get Aethel? Does Aethel want to come out here and... The range on your gun, Hawks. Oh, you've got some range, actually. That's pretty cool. See if you remember how to be a Templar, Nacho. Jump in. Get this one. Oh, no. You're being shot. Terribly. Jump in. No, stop being shot. Stop. Oh, dear. Nacho's down. Right. She's back up. But needs to get out of here. Get out. Get out. Get out. Oh, there's so many of them. I think Nacho's in real trouble here. Can we jump over? Can we jump away, Nacho? And again. Stop shooting, Nacho. Nacho, you just... You did nothing. Okay, they, they've bombed us a bit. Oh, my goodness. Hucker, what, what are you doing? You can, you can shoot this guy. Orcs shoot this guy. Stun that one. Aethel's now down. Amazing. Looks like it's Zary and Kerwin that we're going to need to send in to do some work. Uh, Nacho's bleeding out in nine hours. Aethel's crawling to safety. They're fleeing. They're fleeing, though. That's good news. Okay, we've succeeded. Okay. Could you... Uh... Okay, we're fine. We're fine. We're fine. 
Troll pants. Okay, good. Good. Nacho, we need to get you to a hospital. Could you somehow? I was being shot at. Now this one isn't running away. Interestingly enough, Hawks, stop them from shooting Clav. Wait one second for the generation X. That's fine. Stop shooting Clav. Now finish them. Nacho, come. Out. And again, jump in. Get this guy. Get this guy murdered. There he is. There he's gone. Okay, what the devil happened with you? Psychotropic fungus addiction. How was you standing for this long with all of your asthma and everything wrong with you? That's insane. One final jump for Nacho. Go to hospital. Hawks, go to hospital. Kerwin, go to hospital. Zari, finish these things off. Strip him. Now finish him off. It's over. And, uh, oh my goodness. Hawks is bleeding out in 12 hours. Got their left arm and left leg shot up pretty badly. Ale's fine. Just toxic build-up. Nacho was shot to pieces. But he's in the hospital, so that's fine. Kerwin... I mean, Kerwin's just a mess. Clav's fine. Okay. Everybody's fine. Should probably clean up these corpses. I think armour mightn't be a bad idea, at least for, you know, Nacho, who wasn't really able to achieve anything as a result of jumping in and then immediately being shot to pieces. And the MVP there was Zari. And this is fine. This is totally fine. This is normal, right? Putting the corpses in this pond. I suppose the fact that we can't actually fit Kerwin in here means that we should probably build a couple more beds in this hospital, huh? I've also realised that Kalani doesn't have a place to live either. And uh, Nacho's actually managed to get an infection in her left leg, which is super wonderful. Fortunately for Nacho, we've got a troll pants. A troll pants, yes, sure. We've got a troll pants that uh, can use word of immunity and just make sure that that infection goes nowhere fast. There we go. You're gonna be fine. We've intercepted a distress signal from a nearby camp of the civil ones. Frantic voice begs for immediate assistance defending a threat. They offer everything at their camp. Where's this? It's not far at all, actually. And we've got 15 days to investigate it. Yeah, we'll make sure we do that once people are back to relative normality, so far as their wounds are concerned. I wonder who we'd send. We'd probably send... Maybe Hawks and Nacho again, actually, thinking about it. In fact, in order to get that to happen, can we get a word of healing? On uh, Nacho there, Troll Pants. Well, you haven't got enough Psy Focus to do it for Hawks, but it was Nacho, yeah. Nacho had a lot more wounds that needed healing comparative to Hawks, so I guess that's fine. Nacho's gained a Psy Link level, which I think would actually, if we took that level now, I think that would make Nacho the de facto leader instead of Hawks. I'm not sure I want yet. Saying that, what if... If we were to invert Clav, Clav would make a good head of HR with that social skill. Aethel would be alright too. He's not a Psycaster either, so he wouldn't, you know, suffer from constantly having to switch the roles around. Maybe we go for Clav or Aethel on that. Nacho and Hawks are fully healed. I think it's worth us investigating that distress signal, so we will send them out. They once again hit the road. Who knows what they're going to find upon their destination, surely. Nothing will go wrong. As soon as I said nothing would go wrong, the warning for the ancient Dana popped up and scared the living daylights out of me, but it's fine. We'll uh, we'll investigate this. Sense of foreboding overcomes Nacho as she draws near this ancient wall. She's not sure why, and it may contain great danger. We'll we'll investigate that in due course, I'm sure. We'll see you once you arrive at the old civil one's distress signal. The old civil ones have been quite nice to us since we joined joined since we arrived on this planet. So uh, I think it's only fair that we investigate a distress signal that they sent out. You know, I feel like that's what we'd do. What has happened here? It's a tough spike. And there are some pit burrows. I, oh my god. <laughs> okay. This looks completely normal. Flesh bulbs, flesh spikes. It's flesh as far as the eye can see. Okay, let's tread carefully and... I mean, there's a lot of dead ones, but... Uh, 
and we, we can fill it in, I see. Nacho, could you prioritize filling in that burrow? And Hawks, could you... Oh, good. The turrets are taking care of that thing for us. Look at this. Can we shoot it? Oh, God, it bleeds. <laughs> awesome. Well, this is entirely gross. Shoot this one, so maybe we can clear a path through easy. That's one of those burrows down. Ambush. Flesh beasts are emerging from a pit. Okay, cool. Uh, into the into the water, because that's that's four flesh beasts to the two of you that exist. Hey, they're going to go for the turrets, aren't they? Yes, they are indeed. And it's going to blow. Blow up a all. Perfect. That's what you like to see. Though there is another one up here. Nacho. Protect hawks. Hawks. Whoa, okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, stun that one. And stun that one. Oh, come on, you could fight. You could fight harder than this. Nice. You're bleeding out. Of course you're bleeding out. Are you bleeding out? Hey, we're going to have to get some self tend on the go. Tend hawks. Nacho. Fill in this burrow. Well, at least that turret blew those those four up that appeared. That's saved us a job. Especially considering they split up the way they do. Okay, that's all of the pit burrows filled in, I want to say. Nothing here, okay. There's a building here, you see, so I'm just trying to see if there's anything inside these buildings. Because they claimed that they had some uh, technology and whatnot with them here. So far, we haven't really found much of anything. Oh, great. Well, it, it, it'll change for the worse. Let's, let's ignore what's in there for now. Hawks, how you doing? You're fine. Do we want to take this fight? This one's just randomly keeled over and died. That's interesting. Yes, let's take the fight. Let's go. We can stun it and do such things. Stun. Kill it. Perfect. There you go. Finished off. And let's say in the area is safe, which says to me that we've explored as much of this as we're going to be able to. So, uh, okay. Area safe. Job done. They've sent a bulk goods trader over to our uh, village. So that's very kind of them. We'll, uh, we'll have a look at what they've got going on. And we could theoretically study the flesh beasts, but there's none that we've left alive to bring home. Fair enough. Fair enough. And uh, we did, um, we were able to salvage a few of the turrets from that map. So we have brought those home with us. I'm sure they'll come in useful. Right in time for the old civil ones. Well, goods caravan to arrive. So, uh, Clav, why don't you go and say hello to Jackie the bulk goods trader for us? We were able to get rid of all that ambrosia and pick up 32 components, which is kind of useful, actually. I'm happy with that. Really just racking up the components at the moment. And the deserter quest is going to expire in 12 hours. I think we're going to ignore this and continue with being at least on speaking terms with the Imperium rather than uh, outright enemies with them. And we could actually build some guns if we were this way inclined too. I'll at least begin to build some guns. So yeah, I think gunsmithing is absolutely going to be next on the agenda for research. We've researched a couple of things, but it's, it's nothing particularly interesting. So nevertheless, the research does continue. We were also lucky enough to find this sword off shotgun or Aethel to be able to equip as a sidearm, which is kind of nice. So now aethel has got access to the sword and the shotgun and new lovers. <laughs> another, another round of new lovers. <laughs> It's Farley and Clav. Farley courted Clav by implying good things about his own charm. Clav responded well and is now Farley's lover. Clav has formed a psychically bonded romantic relationship with Farley. And Farley will benefit psychologically from the connection to Clav. Well, that's very nice. The two of you, you know, not being capable of violent acts and everything else and being together is just, just a real treat. Sure, I'm happy for you both. And gunsmithing is finished too, which is super excellent. Could grab the multi-analyzer. Very tempting to grab the multi-analyzer. We'll just grab the multi-analyzer. Introducing my all-time favorite Rimworld mechanic, Blight. 
we've effectively just lost all those plants, which is even more annoying by the fact that all this corn here was effectively ready for harvesting. What can you do? Thanks, Randy. I, I think he heard me, because as I'd said thanks, Randy, what should show up? A group of pirates from the Puggers. A group of pirates from the Puggers have arrived nearby. These raiders seem to be led by a powerful Psycaster. Use psychic powers to manipulate the battlefields. Psycasters in this group. Ulival. Deserter. Great, hello. You've got a Hellcat rifle. And you're carrying a hacksaw, <laughs> a steel club. One of you has a mini turret gun too. And Ulaville. This one is the Psycaster. A dirt mole. Interesting. Unfortunately, we don't know what sort of Psycaster they are, just that they are one. It didn't say if they were attacking immediately or not, so let's assume that they are. Nacho is still currently out of action due to a boar related incident. Oh, and on top of all that, you know, we've actually got the blight to cut as well. Let's just try and get this blight cut. In fact, Kalani, you have to come and... Whoa, sugar! Clav! What are you doing? Clav! Okay. That's changed the plan. Let's go. Save Clav. Clav who can't fight back. Farley, no, go away. Go go home. Okay, hook it, Hawks. You're our gunners. Get some cover behind these trees. There you go. And the rest of you get some cover too. Okay, Hawks. What's the burden? Stun. Stun hasn't quite got the reach. Psychic Shock definitely hasn't got the reach. Clav's still running for her life. Nacho's almost here. Where's the gunners? Which one's the gunners? You a gunner? No. One of them had a gun. Is it Zed? No. No. Oh, there. Ulival. Nacho, your target is Ulival. Jump in. Get right up in that business. Quick. There you go. Okay. And they've started uh, they've started the work on Zari. Hawks, can we get some stuns on the go? Opug, for example. And in fact, we could do one better, right? We could go for a Psychic Shock here. Perfect. Okay. Nacho's getting Nacho's downed their Psycaster slash Gunner, which is fantastic news. And didn't end up bleeding as a result of that endeavor either. So that's great. I think we're fine. Strip that fool. Do we want to maybe capture Ulival? Given the fact that they're a Psycaster and we are the psychic way, we'd kind of be like, hey, hey there, Psycaster. What's going on with them? They're bleeding out in 13 hours. We've got a death. Wow, they look at all this. Wait, final question. They're not unwaveringly not. You know what, Nacho? Let's change this house into a prison just for now. And then Nacho, capture this fool. And we're still fighting down here, but I think we've won. Kerwin stops being shot by and, uh, Hawks. That'll be great. Okay, we, we've won. We've won. It's fine. Zari needs rescuing. Troll Pants, could you rescue Zari? Kerwin's fine. Aethel's fine. You just go. Okay. A victory, if ever there was one, right? As soon as he's put in the prison, this fella's going to try and break out of it. I don't think so. Nacho, do something about that. Thank you. Look at it, Hawks. Just having a great time watching these guys like stand up, try and walk away, and then putting them back down. Troll Pants is meditating rather than actually tending to anyone's wounds, but... Except for Zari, everyone's actually fine. And yeah, Zari's being tended to by Farley now, so that's great. Troll Pants got a uh, thing, but one, one thing at a time. One thing at a time. Right, okay. We actually got some armor out of that. Some seriously good armor, too, uh, which is really nice. I think, given the fact that Nacho's, we've already seen, being in the th thicker things and uh, had to immediately leave the thicker things, this eminently poor armor, still better than no armor. I think this is going to go to Nacho. A Hellcat rifle. A versatile assault rifle with good range, decent power, and good accuracy that comes equipped with a mini burner. Okay. 
maybe we could uh, find someone that would be worth giving that to as well. We should probably give that turret pack to... I will give that to Nacho just whilst, while she's here. Hey, she's coming out of this with uh, some really nice new gear. Perfect time to hit Clav with a bit of the uh, conversion. It went from 92 to 0 as well. That's amazing. That's actually put Clav straight into the correct way of thinking. So now we can do what we were talking about, which seems like forever ago, but change Clav over to the head of HR so we can start just freely letting our sidecasters become the leader as and when it suits them. As well, uh, given the fact that we've gotten quite a few people here now, they're interested in the abyssal form and the shadowed emblem being created. We're missing a water tower. How are we missing a water tower? There's a water tower right there. Oh, look. <laughs> That's how we're missing a water tower. Dang it. Well, we did have no raids, and now we're... Uh, the raids we're getting are leaving us with a little bit of, uh, shall we say, a busy hospital. But... We aren't really wearing any armor. Nacho is now, but no one else really is. So that's kind of why, I suppose. Our prisoner then. Eleanor Ulival. Strange child and a loyal janissary. She's a psychopath, industrious and sluggish, and a very good miner. And a dirt mole, rather than a baseliner. Oh, well, I was going to say everyone's a baseliner, but they're not. Clav's a uh, high mate, and Kalani's a Goranlankin, which means Kalani... Sleeps a lot. At any rate, Ulival, I think, what, what's, what's your story here? Fast wound healing, you're a slow runner, you don't like sunlight. Nearsighted? Oh, man. They're another, like, they're another melee character, aren't they? Which I'm not strictly against. But I'd really like someone else who could use a gun. We'll let you go. We'll let you go. We'll convert you and then we'll let you go. There you are. Think the way we do, Ulival. Troll Pants has reached uh, 15 intellectual, which means we can give Troll Pants a expertise. And I think we'll put that straight into researching. Save the other expertise for when Troll Pants hits that 15 point in medical. However long that might take. We've also got a blood moon going on. One of the moons of this planet has orbited into the Rimworld Umbra, blocking all direct sunlight from illuminating the moon's surface. It resulted in the moon taking on a crimson colour, known as the blood moon. Sanguifage Mechanites will go into overdrive. Well, we don't have to worry about any of this. Any blood feeder Sanguifage with less than half hemogen supply will enter the Hemo Hunter mental state. Okay, well, we haven't got any Sanguifages, so instead we've just got a strange filter over the screen for the duration of the Blood Moon, but that's fine. Our very first trade ship has arrived, a gene trader. Not affiliated with any faction because they're in space. And they're known as Volova Solutions. Let's uh, let's take a look at what they've got going on for us. Uh, Nacho, go and... Uh, is it Clav? I guess it's Clav now. We could sell Ulival as a slave. We're not going to do that because uh, slavery is not what we're about. We have got Laurel from the Druidic Circle, an ocular kin, and Vaznath, who is a minstrel and an impid. Wow, you are quite good, actually. You can't do a lot of things, but the things you can do are quite good. Unfortunately, everything you're good at, we've already got covered. What about Laurel? Yeah, we've got that covered too, unfortunately. Oculakin, though, what's that? Individualistic and bizarre. Warped and cunning and possess an ability to connect with ocular trees. Excellent at take care of plants. So you're similar to Kalani, then. Just a different type of uh, tree person. There are one or two interesting-looking genes that these uh, traders are selling. For example, fast healing would be quite nice. An extreme meditation too, but unfortunately we've, we're have we not really in any position to afford any of that. So it's just going to have to be a whole bunch of... Uh, we, we got 86 silver out of the entire transaction. Go team. Kerwin's become completely untethered from reality, ranting about impossible subjects. What? What's the matter with you? You've stolen Nacho's old clothing. Rambled about the hollow promises of faith. Okay, Kerwin, you um, you and your tentacle just do your thing. Don't worry about it. Kerwin whispered incoherently about the echoes of forgotten screams. Cool. We have learned of a way to escape the planet, the High Stellark. 
of the Imperium will perform a customary visit with any count of his domain. Invite him, satisfy his royal needs for 12 days. You can all ride the shuttle to the Imperial Flotilla. Join the Imperial Court or escape for a new life amongst the stars. Earning the title of Count means completing quests to earn honour may take years. But that is a way of getting passage off this planet, should we want it. So I guess not taking in the deserter was the right decision? I don't know, maybe we'll pursue that. That's an option. If it's ultimately decided that they even want to leave this crazy planet. And another quest, the Relic of XCOM Remnants. Learnt that a relic is nearby. The Dark Lance is an ancient object venerated by all remnants. Dark Lance. A .50 caliber rifle. Okay. We'll uh, watch for opportunities to gather information about the Dark Lance for sure. Given the fact that uh, they are now after the Shadowed Emblem and the Abyssal Form, we should probably think about an extra little building here to house those things and serve as the sort of I don't know, the centerpiece, shall we say? That's what communities have, right? A centerpiece? At any rate, it's a it's a reason to put a building together to house such things. So uh, I'm kind of eyeballing this little area here. Looks quite nice. Looks like a place that we would, you know, w want such a thing. So sure, we'll, we'll put something together for that. I think this will do as a reasonable size for what we're going for here, at least for now. And the Abyssal Form is going to need an art bench as well. So uh, build a quick one of those. We've got Kalani, right? Yeah, Kalani's artistic. That's good news. And another quest for a fear cluster. An acolyte of the Imperium is making a request. A mechanoid swarm has been attacking our settlements. Signal the mechs to distract them while she clears the hive. If we do, a cluster will land at the valley. We'd get some troopers to help us out. I think we'll accept this. We, we can accept this with Hawks for that honour. We've got Fokio, who's come equipped with a bi-coded heavy SMG, and Justinia, who's using a carbine. Okay, cool. So you've actually brought some guns with you. That's good news. Are you good at using them? 15 shooting and four? Hell yeah. All right. Down with that. And the mechanoids have arrived. What on earth is a dagger snout? Fast, insect-like, armed with a vicious blade on its head. Not as dangerous, such as Scythers, but pure in numbers. And that's an auto-mortar. Don't like the look of that. They've got quite a few turrets with them, and a centipede burner, which is what? Equipped with a Inferno cannon. Terrific! Okay, well, but for Zari and Kerwin, everyone is ready to go, so let's get in on this. Ah, uh, don't shoot them! Fire at will. Turn that off. Thank goodness the bullet didn't land. Really, really didn't want them to activate before everyone was here. We've got a second to be able to prep for this. So uh, as long as we're not inside that red circle, we're good. So how, how do we want to play this? Well, first of all, what we want to do is probably actually upgrade Nacho Psycasts to include Blade Focus. And did Hawks get a level up yet? No. Troll Pants did. I've stabilized. There you are, Troll Pants. Good work. Okay, how do we want to play this? I think we're going to need to send Nacho in on that uh, gigantic centipede. Don't go in the area. That, oh, like, like we'll, we'll send Nacho in with a jump. That's fine. Can you jump there? You could jump there. Okay, the thing of it is, is that those turrets are going to suck. So if we have Hooker and Hawks on those guys. Aethel takes care of this turret. Nacho on the centipede. Okay, I think, I think that's a plan. So you four on that. Aethel runs in on the turret, Nacho Blade focuses, and then jumps onto the centipede. Here we go. And Hawks, you could even do one, one further and stun that thing so it doesn't clap Aethel. Well, it's definitely good for it. Okay, nice one. Aethel, you four, move in, and then attack that turret. Aethel's finished that job. Move in on the centipede, help Nacho out. Whoa. Okay. Uh, that ain't good. That's really bad. Troll Pants, where are you? I wasn't expecting the explosion. To be honest with you, what on earth happened? The mini slugger turret, the mini slugger turret. Was that really the explosion? Nacho, are you okay? I mean, you're bleeding out, but nothing's fallen off. That's fine. Oh no. I, I, okay, who's the bad shot? You. You melee attack the, the centipede. Troll Pants, get over here. Oh yeah. Shoot the centipede too. Don't shoot the friendly guy, though, because 
would be so kind. And you know what? You can play fire at will now. Troll pants, where are you? He's taking his sweet time. It's not like Nacho and Aethel are bleeding out over here or anything like that. Okay, that thing's dead. Good work. You two can stay where you are. Look at, uh, I don't want you rescuing. Oh, I guess we're going to have to. Yeah, okay, fine. Troll pants, meanwhile, head to the hospital. And then you two can just burn this murder down. Murder? Mortar. Run away. Keep running. Great success. That wasn't too bad. And we've now unlocked the Acolyte Ceremony, but we would need a throne for Hawks. Wow. Hawks wants a throne. Doesn't ask for much. A throne. Hey, Troll Pants. Uh, stabilize. Stabilize Nacho. Aethel's going to be fine too. Okay, Nacho's fine, but just needs rescuing. Stabilize Aethel. Great work. They're both going to be okay. Apart from the explosion that blew up Aethel and Nacho in the Trails of Blood... I think that went about as well as it possibly could have. And Kerwin stopped rambling, and is now just lying in bed very peacefully. What a great time. I like the uh, mood impact that Kerwin's rambling has had. Kerwin is talking nonsense. Is she insane? Well, yeah, apparently a little bit of insanity was on the cards for Kerwin there. They're fine now, so don't worry about it. We've Got enough of the old anima grass around the anima tree here now to do a linking ritual. The thing is, I'm not quite sure whom it should be that we do the linking ritual with, or even could do it with. Who could we even do it with? Clav or Kalani, neither of which are very combat capable. Mind, we still could do it with them. You know what? I think we will. We'll do, we'll do it with uh, we'll do it with Clav. Hawk, Hawk's gained a level two, but don't worry about that. A strange ritual all said and done they've just kind of stood and danced around the tree for a bit but uh there we go it worked out in the end linking complete lav has completed the linking ritual and four of the anima grass has been restored so that's quite good so clav let's see i'm kind of actually thinking like a technomancer might be useful for clav i'm interested in crafting so you know sure you know what clav congratulations you are now a technomancer very happy to have you here Technomancer would have been kind of cool for Huckett too, but um, Huckett's not psychic. So one thing I've had in mind is, at the moment, this sort of uh, solar array is a bit of a centerpiece that isn't very pleasant. So I'm actually thinking about moving the anima tree. We've got a mod that lets us move the anima tree, by the way. Move the anima tree, I think, is what the mod's called, actually. At any rate, yes, I'm thinking about moving the anima tree into this sort of, like, to be a centerpiece, if you like. And then we'll adjust the... Um, solar and wind array there somewhere a little bit more not here maybe here yeah i think here would be good well that didn't take long clav's pregnant which i guess makes farley the yeah it is farley great that's just another thing for us to deal with and another person i like this is insane i've never had a colony as large as this in such a short amount of time i mean we've what been here for 36 days okay maybe that is a reasonable amount of time i don't know Hopefully it's not going to be another non-violent baby. I guess we'll find out in 18 days or so. The first abyssal form has been completed. And uh, this is what an abyssal form looks like. Another derelict radio beacon has uh, sent us the location of another biotech experimentation lab, which is actually quite a fair distance from us. I'm not too enthusiastic about that might leave that one just for now anyway unless we come up with a means of transportation anyway i do like the tree being here with the squirrels and the hare and the raccoon it's a little bit of nature in the middle of town Rolpants offered a backhanded compliment about aethel's diet this drove aethel into a rage and he began a fight Trollpants wouldn't have hit back he would have just been punched in the nose <laughs> Aethel hit Troll Pants with his left fist, bashing his nose. He nearly took his nose clean off his face. One of ten hit points. Poor Troll Pants. I say poor Troll Pants, but I mean, you know, you don't just give someone a backhanded compliment about their diet, do you? You're really on one today, aren't you? Is it the case that people just walk into the kitchen and get insulted? Guess we'll never know. He's fully healed now, so at least he's not gone back into the hospital and, I don't know, insulted Troll Pants as whatever. The Librarian, High Stellarch of the Exclusionary Imperium, has sent us a message. 
Scouts have discovered an old complex in an almost untouched condition. Nobody knows where and why the former dwellers have gone, so we should prepare for anything. That's also pretty far away with medium wealth. Actually, it's not that far, you know. What's what's the distance on that? Two days. What would be kind of nice is some means of transportation, actually. Things are starting to spawn a bit further away. It'd be nice to be able to just get there, you know? And I think the last thing on the agenda for today, now that our little uh, sanctum here is completed, is a role change for Clav to the new head of HR. I quite like the way this turned out, complete with two abyssal forms. I'll let you decide which of which is the more abyssal of these two. As they close off, I think we will too. Thank you very much for joining me on another weird day here in Cauliflower Valley. I'm quite happy with how things have progressed so far. And... I'm quite happy to continue on this current trajectory, such as we are, of just seeing how things play out for this ragtag crew. Because uh, it's been a lot of fun. I hope you're enjoying it as much as I am. One way or the other, thank you very much for joining me, and I will hope to see you next time. Until then, take care.